Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. My stories start in many different ways. This one began in the shattering turmoil of a manhunt and ended in the quietness of the morgue. Nightbeat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. People are always telling me how lucky I am to have a job where all I've got to do is walk around Chicago at night looking for a story. It's a dandy little job, sure. All you need is a pneumonia jacket, an extra set of art supports, and a goodly supply of penicillin, and you're all set. <laughs> the city at night, fascinating. That old nose for news, frozen stiff and ready to fall off. Those eagle eyes so watery and bloodshot from the wind, they wouldn't serve a self-respecting canary. Yes, sir, it's lovely work if you can get it. And brothers and sisters, have I got it. <laughs> Oh, I guess I was just bitter. I'd walked from the loop to the near north side, waiting for a story to tap me gently on the shoulder, and so far it was no hits, no runs, and no errors. The streets were empty. Everybody was home hugging a radiator. And then far away I heard that lonely blues in the night sound, a police siren. And then another. And another. And then it seemed like there was a whole chorus of sirens singing about what a cruel, cruel world it all was. And then one siren separated itself from the rest and came closer. A prowl car coming down the street, stopping just a few yards away from me, and a police officer jumping out of it and hurrying to a call box. The officer passed under the street lamp, and I saw the excited look on his face, and I thought, all right, Stone, you lucky dog, let's go to work. This is Malachek. <clears throat> yeah, okay, we're on our way over there right now. Right. Uh, officer, just a second. What do you want, mister? What's up? Sounds like every squad car in the city's on the loose. Look, I got no time, mister. Read it in the papers tomorrow. Oh, I never touch the stuff. Look, the name is Stone, Chicago Star. Oh, reporter? Well, mildly, that's a general call, isn't it? I got no time to stand here, Gavin. I'll give it to you fast. Gig Sanders busted loose. Sanders? Great. When and how? Read it in your paper, Stone. All right, cross and let's move. They got him trapped. <laughs> Gig Sanders, two-time loser, a killer, loose in a city of four million people and everyone his enemy. I hurried to a phone, checked with the police, and then drove over to that part of Chicago called the Badlands. That strange area belonging to every city, surrounded by business section, yet itself run down, deteriorated, filled with tenements and abandoned factories. It was there the police had thrown a cordon around a boarded-up building. My pass got me through and up to the front line, and police captain Arlen. Hello, Stone. Well, the hunt's on, huh? I don't know. We'll see in a minute. Sanders in that building? Got a tip he would be. Wait a second. All right. All right, Billings. Turn the searchlights on the building. Keep two of them on the roof. Run the others back and forth. All right. Sticking around, Stone? Yeah, I guess so. You sure Sanders is in there? No, but we couldn't afford to pass up the tip. The tip? Where'd he come from? No, no, no. It's just a phone call. Uh -huh. But Sanders knew this neighborhood like the back of his hand, likely to be here. Captain Ireland, ready with the speaker now. Okay, bring it here. Now, check. It's quite a crowd gathered for the kill. Yeah, making it tough for us. Sanders is armed like an artillery corps, and if he's in there... Uh, I see what you mean. How'd he get away? I haven't got the full details yet, but he was being taken to the death house. Killed a cop. He's a nice boy. Here you are, Captain. Okay. All right. Here it goes. Sanders? Sanders! Listen to me! There's no way out of that building that isn't covered. Come out with your hands in the air. We'll give you 20 seconds. Hear that, Sanders? 20 seconds. We'll count them off for you. Now, what if he doesn't show? Tear gas first, then we'll go in after him. Mm -hmm. If he comes out with his hands up, he goes to the death house. If he doesn't... He'll come out. Rats always believe there's a chance to beat the chair. <laughs> well, his life is hope. No sign of him. Malachek, come here! Yes, sir. Take the microphone. When I give the signal, start counting off 20 seconds. Yes, sir. He's given him more than 20 seconds. Not him, the crowd. They won't push in so close when the counting starts. Oh. Oh, look at them. Look at those faces. Perfectly normal human beings for 23 and a half hours of the day. Give them something like this for 30 minutes and they become a mob. Waiting, watching, hoping for the kill. People, Randy, want to change them? <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll retool and put out a nice new eight-cylinder model with a convertible sole. Get ready, Manilchek. Yes, sir. Captain, there's my story. 
Sandberg? No, no, no. That's for the front page, boys. That mob, that's my story. Look at that young couple right over there. Look at those two. They're hoping Sanders will come out shooting. Otherwise, they'll want their money back, huh? I suppose so. I'll see you later. Where are you going? I want to stand by that couple and listen to them. All right. Malachek, start counting. But warn him first. Once more. Sanders. Sanders. We're going to start counting right now. Come out with your hands in the air or we'll cut you in half when we come in after you. One... Two, three, four. I edged my way behind the young couple. They looked so nice and so human. But here they were, the same as all the rest. Nine. Go back just a little over a thousand years, put on a toga, and take a seat in the Colosseum at Rome. Have a great day watching the gladiators butcher each other. Cheer for the lions, or if you prefer people, cheer for the slave to kill the lion. Makes no difference. It's all the same holiday. Somebody gets killed. And then it started. Let him have it! It was all over in a few moments. The tear gas, the police rushing in with their masks on, the crowd straining forward to get a glimpse of Sanders. But there was no Sanders, and the police came up. Nobody in there, Captain Ireland. He must have been. No, sir, not a soul. We've covered every inch. I watched the crowd, and strangely enough, there was relief on their faces, and even a little shame that they'd hoped for the kill. The young couple in front of me. He wasn't there, Ken. He wasn't there. I know. Come on. Let's get out of here quick. Ken, Ken, I'm, I'm sick. Evie, hold on to me. Let us through, please. Let us through. Yeah, here, this way. Come on. Will you clear the way, please? She's sick, mister. Maybe it's a natural reaction to disappointment. Huh? Nothing, nothing. Come on. We'll get through this way. Will you let us through, please? Excuse me, will you? Please. Thank you. She's got to sit down, mister. She's got it. Okay. Here, here's my car. Let it get in here. Kenny. Kenny wasn't there. He's... He's loose. Never mind. Come on, baby. I'll get you home. You better let me drive him. No. We'll be all right. Ken, I... I'm sick. I... Just a little while, Evie. We'll be home. Look, fella, it's easy to see what's the matter. She can't walk home in her condition. It ain't far. A block would be too far. I'll get a cab. No. I don't want anybody around us. Don't want anybody around you? That's a laugh. You bring her out here to this. Why didn't you take her on a nice tour through the packing house? Oh, shut up. What right you got to talk like that? The founding fathers gave it to me. You don't know nothing about it. You don't know. Ken, take me home. Look, my car is still here. You're in no spot to refuse help no matter what your reason. Now, come on. Let him let him take his Kenny, please. I... Come on. They lived very close. It didn't take over three minutes to get to their tenement building. I wanted to take her to a hospital, but she refused. She refused in a way that made me look at her hard. And there was another thing. The way she reacted when the police found out Gig Sanders wasn't in the oil factory. Terror. That's what it was. Sheer Terror. And I helped her husband carry her up the stairs and into their meager little flat. On the couch, mister. Yes. Okay. There. Now, have you got a phone? What for? Call a doctor. We ain't got a phone. But there's a drugstore. No, Ken. But, baby... We gotta get out. We ain't got time for a doctor now. Just let me rest. You're in no condition to refuse a doctor. I'm all right now. Yeah, yeah, Sure. It ain't going to be for three weeks. That's what the doctor three said. Three weeks? To... And you drag her out to that great exhibition? Why didn't you... Shut up. I told you before you didn't know nothing about it. Mind your own business and leave us alone. What are you, you looking like that for? What's the matter with you, with both of you? Nothing. Oh, yes, there is. You're scared stiff. Of what? Please go, like Kenny says. Leave us alone. Well, let me phone for a doctor from the drugstore. I, I, I won't come back. Just the doctor. Evie? No, we ain't got time, Kenny. Don't you know that? We ain't got time. He's loose, Ken. He's loose. Easy, baby, don't. <laughs> You're talking about Gig Sanders, aren't you? Why? Why are you afraid of him? Do you know him? Come on, what about a talk? No, not to nobody. You're scared of Sanders. Why? Look, mister, you helped us, all right? Thanks. Now get out of here. We gotta tell somebody. I said nobody. You know what'll happen. We gotta tell. Mister... Who are you? My name is Stone, Chicago Star. Newspaper, newspaper. That frighten you? Maybe he can help. Maybe he can. Nobody can. You know that. I'll tell him. Evie, shut up. It was Kenny who took the cops. Evie. I had to tell somebody. Maybe he can help. That's the truth, Kenny? I... Yeah. 
It was me tipped the cops. That Sandler's was in the factory? I thought he might be, but he wasn't. All right, all right. Now tell me something else. How do you know so much about it? Come on, if you want me to help, I gotta know you're on the level, so tell me. Tell him. How do I know that he won't go straight to the police? How do I know that? We gotta trust somebody. We gotta. Can we trust anybody? Well, try it and see. I... Him and me in the same gang once. I did time, but I got out before he did. I went straight because... Because... Go ahead. It was for me. Oh. All right, now... How about the tip to the police? There'll be a reward, you know. Sanders is big time. I didn't do it for no reward. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Mr. Stone, help us. How? How can I help? By getting out now and keeping your trap shut up. And that'll help? No, you'll be back where you started. Your wife knows that, or she wouldn't have asked me to help. Giggle, come after us. How would he know that you gave the information to the police? He'll guess. We used that factory plenty of times for a hideout. Nobody else knew how to get in. There's a cell away. All right, let me ask you another question, Kenny. What? Why did you tip the police? Gig. Gig hates me. Why? Kenny married me while. while Gig was still in the pen. Oh, you were his girl? No, I never was. I never was his girl at all. I was like everything else Gig liked. Everything was his, no matter who it belonged to. To him, a, a girl was like anything else his, his gun, his clothes. Anytime Gig Sanvers wanted something, it was his. I never loved him. I, I told him, but he just laughed like. What I felt didn't mean nothing. I see. And now? Now he's loose. He hates me because of Evie, and he's going to know I tipped the coppers. Mr. Stone, if it's the last thing he does, he's going to get us, Evie and me. Listening to Nightbeat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Those kids were scared, plenty scared. I asked them the only question that made sense, and I got my answer. Go to the police? <laughs> sure. A guy who serves time goes to the cops. He tells them he gave him a bump steer. They got every copper in Chicago around that factory while Gig gets away someplace else. Yeah, yeah, sure. They'd believe me, wouldn't they? Well, try it. I'll go with you. Listen, you don't know. I changed my name. I moved all over the state looking for a job. This is the only place I could get one. I had to come back here. So what does that prove? It'll be in the papers. He'll lose his job, Mr. Stone. I can't do that. Not with Evie. Then what do you want me to do? Look, maybe if I give you a, a, a list of the places the coppers might find Gig, maybe you could tip him. So what if he doesn't show up? There ain't many places he can go. Look, maybe by this time he's out, maybe even out of the state. He's killed an officer. He won't dare to stay here. Gig, as long as he knows Evie and me are still alive, he'll stay. He hates me so much, he'll take that chance. Does he know you live here? No. I ain't even seen any of the old bunch at all. I moved around. Always moving. Keep away. Mr. Stone, go to the police. But don't tell him nothing about me. Will you get it through your head that they'll protect you? Even so, Gig's got friends. If they find out it was me... All right, yeah. So you got to go to the police... All right. Where's the drugstore? Right at the corner. You'll see it. All right. Stay right here. Keep your door locked until I get back. It was a short two minutes to the corner drugstore. I put in my call and started back to the flat. The street was quiet, deserted. The dirty tenements, a solid block of ugliness against the night. I reached the tenement entrance, and I was just about to start up the steps. Hey, pal. Huh? Don't turn around. Uh, Stand nice and quiet. That's it. What is this, a hold-up? Sure, a hold-up. Now listen to me. Take out a cigarette. What? Take out a cigarette. That's it. Now light it. Act natural. Good boy. Now? Where are you? In your car at the curb, smart boy. What? Don't turn around, I said. Take a look up and down the street. I am. Coppers? No. Okay. Now come here to the car. You're going to do like I tell you, understand? What do you want? Who? You don't know who I am, Stone. Yeah, I guess I do. Listen, I'm going up to that flat you come to. Don't do it, Sanders. Sure, I'm going to do it. This gun says I can do it. Leave the two kids alone. Yeah. 
All alone. You're wasting time, Sam. There's time you could use to better advantage. Sure. Now step back a couple of feet. I'm getting out. Just stay in there. Keep smoking a cigarette. Walk ahead of me. Straight in that house. Move. Stop here. Sanders, you're not going to do this and still have time to get away. Real concerned about me, ain't you? Don't worry, I'm a big boy. All right, give him a break. Sure, like they was going to give me. Now listen, you're going back up to that flat. You're going to knock on the door and you're going to tell him to let you in. That clear? What if I don't? So be a hero. I'll get in anyway. It's just easier this way. Okay? I, uh... All right. So let's go. The slow walk up the stairs was a nightmare. I walked down the hall toward the flat. The flat where those two kids waited behind the door that they thought would keep the terror and death away from them. Then, knock. Who is it? Answer. Sanders, please don't do it. You can answer him. Who is it? Answer. It's Stone, Kenny, but I... Oh. You was the long time. Inside. Ah! Shut it up or I will. Ah! Evie, 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 don't. You, Stone, lock that door. All right, Kenny boy, over on the couch. Gig, gig, don't hurt Evie. She's going to have... I see, yeah, congratulations. Listen to me. Shut up, Stone. What? Get over to the couch. On your way, turn out the light. And stay in line with the window so I can see you against the street lamp. Now sit down. We'll talk. You gonna listen to me, Gig? Sure, I'm a wonderful listener. Only make it good and funny, huh? Even me fell in love, Gig. You ain't gonna blame us for that. <laughs> Evie and you fell in love. You think I worried about that? You think I cared what she did? Nah. It's what you done tonight. He was afraid, Sanders. Afraid that you'd come after him because of Evie. I thought about it, mister. Yeah, plenty. But I figured let it go. It ain't worth it. But this tonight is something different. Turning stooly. You'll never get out of Chicago, Sanders. Every cop in the city will be looking for you. That's nothing new to me. Now you, Kenny boy. You did tip the coppers, didn't you? Kick. Listen. We're... We're nothing. You haven't got a chance, Sanders. <laughs> no chance. I always got a chance. My luck's good. You know why I wasn't in that factory, Kenny boy? Because my luck held. I had to get some dough first. <laughs> and you know where I was? In that crowd, just standing there watching. You were in the crowd? Yeah, like watching my own funeral, only the coffin was empty. And I saw you and Evie, Kenny. That's how I knew where the tip come from. All right, you're smart, Sanders. Now be smarter. You've got us where you want us. We can't make a move. But if you kill us, you'll kill the time you need to get away. I got ways. Like I come here. I followed you in a cab, then hid in your park car. Now, ain't that smart? Evie, you ain't said nothing. Big. You gonna kill us? Yeah, I'm gonna kill you, Evie. Sanders, you said your luck held. It can't hold forever. What you're doing now is giving the police minute after minute to catch up with you, and they will sooner or later. You killed an officer, Sanders. You know what that means. Him or me, it had to be that way. Doesn't have to be this way. This way? What Kenny done was to save Evie's life and the baby's right or wrong. That's why he did it. What would you have done to save your own life? I killed a cop to save my life. That answer you? Yes, I guess it does. So it makes sense. That's a radio there by you, ain't it? Yeah. Send it on. We're all gonna sit here and wait for the news. We're gonna see how I'm making out. We sat in the semi-darkness of the room. The only light came from the window that faced the street. Then the 11 o'clock news broadcast came on. The meeting tomorrow will tell us more. Tonight in Chicago, the city's manhunt goes on for Gig Sanders, convicted and sentenced killer. Acting on an anonymous tip, the police surrounded the old Phillips factory, but Sanders had not been there or had escaped before the cordon could be drawn tightly. Meanwhile, rewards totaling $2,800 have been offered. Shut up! 2800 a real nice nest egg, huh, Kenny boy? It wasn't any reward. There is Not... now. Sanders. What do you want, Stone? You said you were smart. So? What are you getting at? Maybe you forgot one thing. Yeah? You came here in a cab. So? The driver get a look at your face? <laughs> Don't give me that. 
The cops would be here long before now. Oh, no, Sanders. Only about a half hour has gone by since they tried for you in the factory. Figure it out. By the time the cab driver reports, by the time the police check... Shut up. You're wasting time. You got half a chance if you take it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you talked me into it. Okay, I'll get going. Gig. No. Please. No. Gig, gig, gig. Not, the, not Evie. Not the baby. The baby? Evie? I could have been rotten in that factory by now. What satisfaction will you get from this sandwich? Satisfaction? Everything in the world. You were friends. Yeah, friends. Did you tell him how good friends we were, Kenny? Did you tell him how we played in the same dirty, stinking streets? How we ate the same slop in the orphan asylum? Did you tell him all that? Big. Yeah, Big. Evie, did you tell him how I was always the one to get Kenny out of jazz when we were kids? They tell you that, Stone? No, but you're thinking of it. Remember it. I am. Oh, I am. All Kenny wanted was a decent life. Even though it cost mine, huh? He wanted to live for his wife and their baby. And I want to live. For what? You shouldn't have said that, Stone. I didn't have nothing against you till you said that. I was going to that death house when I busted loose. I figured a million ways to get away, and I took the chance. When it come, I killed a cop, a cop. And I know what happens to a cop, killer. I know. Ah, they're coming. I guess you were right about that cabbie. The minute the couples will all be set up and ready to get me. Yeah, but I killed a cop. That's how bad I wanted to live. But nobody wants me to. Nobody, you hear? Nobody. Listen, Sanford. You listen. A couple of weeks ago, there was a leopard loose. You know what the people said? You know, Stone? Yes, I know. They felt sorry for the leopard. That's right. Everybody wanted that leopard taken alive. Nobody wanted it killed but me. Me, I'm a human being, and they want to see me cut to pieces. Maybe because that's all the difference in the world between you and that animal. Is there? Is there? You're going to tell me the leopard would know better if he killed to get away. Well, I don't. No, because that's the way I learned to live. Because you didn't want any other way, Sanders. Because it was the easiest way. You grew up in a gutter. You never wanted to get out of it. Other men did. I ain't other men. I'm Gig Sanders. Gig Sanders. Gig, they're all around. You ain't got a chance. Yeah, and that's dandy for you. Just what you want. No, Gig. No, I swear it ain't. You swear. Now, you listen. I'm going out. Yeah, but not with my hands up. And I ain't gonna die alone. Sanders, don't. Do one last decent thing. Let these kids alone. Gig, listen. I'll go with you. Kenny, no. Gig, Gig, I'll, I'll go with you. It'll be you and me again like it always was. I'll help you get away. We can do it together, Gig. We always used to, me and you, remember? You're crazy, Kenny. If they think you're going out with him, you won't have a chance. They'll cut you down with him. You Kenny, won't. Kenny, stay here. I gotta do it, Evie. You gotta see that. I have to do it. Gig, you wanna kill me, all right. I'll be dead if that's what you want, but I'm going out with you. I got a gun. I got a gun. Kenny, put it down. Don't. So you got a gun. You got a gun. All right, shoot me. Why don't you shoot me? I could have. Any time we were sitting here. But you didn't. You was always soft, Kenny boy. You see, Stone, that's the difference between him and me. Then shoot me. Go ahead, kill me now. But even if you don't, I'm going out with you, Kenny. Kenny, you're not talking sense. Sanders, Sanders, we know you're in there. Sanders, this is Captain Ireland. Listen to me. Sanders. I'm listening, copper. Sanders, there are innocent people in that building. We'll give them time to clear. If you've got any human decency left in you, wait before you do anything. But I warn you, Sanders... Come out with your hands in the air. What are you going to do? You know what I'm going to do? Coppers! Coppers, I'm coming up! Right out the front door! Tell everybody else to stay in! Tell them! All right, Sanders. But with your hands up! Now listen, people... Stay in your rooms, lie down on the floor, and stay away from windows and doors. I'm coming, coppers! They'll kill your gig. Sanders, go out with your hands in the air. Oh, sure, sure. Now, Evie, Kenny... Gig. Sanders. Do it, then, gig. Do it and get it over with. Kenny, Kenny, boy, get where I can see your face. Think what you're doing, Sanders. Shut up, son. And the light by the window, Kenny. Now, let me look at you. you. You said you'd go out with me. Yeah. 
Kenny. Don't lie to me now. Don't lie now. I'll go with you, Kate. Swear it's the truth, Kenny. Swear it's the truth. I don't have to swear it, Kate. You're looking at me. Okay. I'm going out alone. And what about Kenny, Evie? That can rot in this stinking world. That can rot. Not me. I'm going out. I'm going out and meet all the coppers in Chicago. Kid, stay where you are. He's gone. He's gone. Sanders, come out with your hands up. Dollars lying down there, Kenny. Better get down and pick it up. I don't want it. You had all the chance in the world. Why didn't you kill him? I couldn't. Gig Sanders was my brother. It's almost dawn again, and I've written another story. It's a story that began a long time ago when a man looked up and answered a question with another question. Am I my brother's keeper? There's an answer to that, and our society has made it. Yes, you are your brother's keeper, but the kept must be worthy of the keeping. Copy, boy. Night Beat, a new dramatic series, stars Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Tonight's story was written by Russell Hughes. Night Beat is edited by Larry Marcus and directed by Warren Lewis. Music by Frank Worth. Others in tonight's cast were Ted DeCorsia, Georgia Ellis, Shepard Menken, Louis Haight, Herb Ellis, and Alan Slate. Frank Lovejoy will next be seen in Milton Sperling's production, Rock Bottom, released by Warner Brothers. Throughout the week, NBC brings you the very best adventure mystery dramas on the air. You'll hear action-packed, fast-moving plots to hold your interest right up to the smashing climax on NBC's thrilling mystery shows. During these stellar programs, you'll hear mystery and intrigue, adventure and high-tension drama. Match your powers of observation against the best in detective fiction in solving crimes and unraveling intrigue. There's fast-moving action to lift you from beside your radio into the romantic land of mystery and adventure. These exciting dramas are as interesting as tomorrow's race results today. And you'll hear them every night over most of these NBC stations. Remember, if it's mystery and adventure dramas you're tuned for, tune for the best on NBC. Listen next week at this same time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. The stories that come out of the shadows to find their way into Night Beat. Tomorrow, Fred Allen joins Bob Hope. Now, Jack Benny is on NBC.